I'm Effie and this is What Effie Reads. Today I am going to be wrapping up the books that I read in the month of June. June was whatever a thon, which was the month long readathon run by Maddie over at Book Browsing Blog. It was also the first month of me using my TBR game. I I would say that although I read a reasonable amount during the course of June, it wasn't necessarily a successful month. So these were the books that were on my TBR from my TBR game. I also had two mood reads but I think I can just count any two books that I read last month as those mood reads. The only one of the six books that I actually read in June was this one, True Crime Story. Of the other five books I started Grotesque. Um, I technically started show, show Us Who You Are although I only got three pages in before the end of the month and I also started Adjustment Day. Uh, the other two books, so that was Amari and the Night Brothers and Circus of Wonders, I just, I didn't read any of, I didn't start. Show Us Who You Are was my bookish besties buddy read for last month and I just genuinely forgot to read it. I I got so stuck into the books that I was reading at the end of June that I forgot that I was actually meant to read this book. However, I have already finished it so it will be on my July wrap up. And then the other two books that I started, I've decided to temporarily DNF. Grotesque is marked as being slow paced, but they're slow paced and there's this book. And it was incredibly slow going to start. And as you can see, the font is tiny as well. So I just couldn't get out of my own head to want to continue to read this book as it is, let me see, it's over 450 pages long in small font and it felt like it wasn't going anywhere. Now I did only get 12 pages in so it could be that once it starts going it gets exciting and I don't think 12 pages is giving it a fair chance. But I think it also took me 45 minutes to read those four pages. So I think I'm going to put it aside for when I'm in more of a mood for it. And Adjustment Day, I, I think I got about 50 pages in. Don't know, I can't see the bookmark now. No, I only got about, I only got 30 pages in. And so far, if was enjoyable but Palinuk's writing tends to be quite absurd and I was just as much as I'm really excited to read this and want to also read The Invention of Sound I just wasn't in the frame of mind where I could enjoy it so again it's a temporary DNF so now let's talk about the books that I actually did read. We've got True Crime Story. This was a book that I had an arc of. It came out I think the middle of last month but as you can tell by the fact that I am I now own a physical copy of it I really really loved. It was actually a five star read for me so essentially it's a little bit like if Daisy Jones and the Six was a murder mystery. You've 
you were introduced to the story of this girl who went missing almost a decade ago at a university party and no one really knows what happened to her. You've got this person who I think is an author, possibly an investigator investigative journalist who's looking into what happened to this girl by interviewing those who knew her best so her friends and her family and very very slowly it's it's quite a fast-paced book book but very slowly you're getting a little bit more information and you're building a picture of what has happened to her but it really keeps you on your toes throughout and there are a number of twists and turns that you just don't expect to happen and the ending completely took me by surprise and it made me feel like I had to reevaluate everything that I thought I knew about this book and I'm I'm very excited to see what other people think of it. As I say, it only came out in the middle of last month. So please let me know if you have read it. And please let me talk to you about it because it is so good. Or at least I think it's so good. So I'd love to hear what other people thought. And then in no particular order, I'm going to go through the other books that I read in June. So I will start with the physical books and then I will get on to the audio books and ebooks and that kind of thing that I don't have a physical copy for. So first off we have got A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Now this book I actually listened to the audio book of and as I was listening to it I loved it so much that I knew I needed a physical copy so that the next time that I read it I can annotate it and I'm just so excited to at some point in the future reread it and take it all in again. In case you are unaware this book comes with a hell of a lot of content warnings and obviously it's up to each individual to figure out what content warnings are what content is potentially going to be triggering for them now personally the content that is contained in this book that was potentially the most triggering for me was the discussion of self-harm and how it made the character that was harming themselves feel but near enough anything that you think could be a trigger is contained within this book so please be aware and if you'd like to reach out to me for like specific details about what kind of content is in this book then please do but it is an exceptionally written book and the final part of this book I basically weeped through the whole of it but I still loved it <laughs> um and the next book we've got is The Wicker King now this book was one of the books that I picked up because it was on the host faves list um, I will link up above to the vlog I did where I talk about reading all the different whatever thon host faves um, this is one of Cody's favourite books and I don't know this book just didn't quite do it for me it very it felt like I was reading someone's fever dream and I had a lot of trouble keeping track of what was supposedly happening which I guess is part of the point like you're not really sure what's happening but it just made 
it really difficult for me to read but I do I do love how the pages got darker and darker as the character's mental state declined however I did forget to turn the light on as you know it went dark outside and I was wondering why can't I read these pages because it felt like it would be light enough to continue to read them but I think I wasn't considering that the pages were basically black. The next book we've got is Seven Days Monday to Sunday which is a manga. I picked up this book because um, I think last year I read Date Me Bryson Keller by Kevin Van Wy, I believe and around the time that that book came out there was a lot of criticism saying that they'd basically plagiarised the book on this manga so and it it was a book I really enjoyed um so I wanted to read the manga so I could actually recommend from a place that had re had read both and could kind of speak on whether it felt like plagiarism or not and I will say that there are a lot of shared elements but this book does have a very different feel to Date Me Bryson Keller. I really enjoyed it. Um, the concept is basically that you've got this boy that agrees to date the first girl that asks him out every week and at the end of the week he says I'm sorry I wasn't able to fall in love with you we must break up and then you've got this other guy who's kind of unlucky in love and kind of on a whim he decides to ask out the the guy that only dates people for a week he agrees and maybe this time will be different and it is it's just really really cute and was exactly what I wanted to read during Pride Month and the the next book we've got is oh Heartstopper Volume 4 I decided that I was really in the mood for queer graphic novels and manga um, just one random evening I was in the mood for it. I didn't actually manage to pick up any of the queer manga on that night but four of the books that I picked up were Heartstopper Volumes 1 to 4. I'd previously read Volume 1 and really enjoyed it. It's like it's sweet it gives you all the good fuzzy feelings and I immediately bought volumes two to four because I knew that I wanted to read the rest of the series but I was kind of putting it off and then I just fancied reading these graphic novels one night and they are they're still sweet it's still a lovely relationship but they do get a lot heavier as they deal quite quite a lot with mental health but one thing I will say for Oseman is that every one of these books has a content warning in now I didn't initially notice it in volume one because it is actually on the um on the copyright page uh, let's see if you can see it I don't know if that's focusing just there it has a line about content warnings however once you get to volume four it's a lot more explicit so again i don't know if my camera's going to focus oh dear can't see but you can see you've got a full content warning there and it's very prominently featured so it's great that these say this especially because like book one 
the things that are mentioned in the content warning you kind of expect based on the context but you potentially wouldn't wouldn't know that you'd need content warnings for some of the stuff that feature in the later volumes and I'm just really looking forward to volume 5 coming out whenever that is because that's going to be the last volume but it'll be really nice to see how this series ends up. The next book I've got is Stone Fruit by Lee Lai. This was the queer picture book pick for the month of June and it was okay it's kind of um literary fiction-esque which i'm finding myself getting into more and more but there was a lot that was left unsaid and it felt like this book just skimmed the surface of the story um someone in the discord server did say that this is a book that potentially you could see more from these characters and I think that is a that's probably a good point like you definitely could go into more depth with them and future volumes you might get more of a in-depth look at the characters so that added depth might mean that I enjoy them more but as a standalone graphic novel it was just missing a bit of something and the next book i have got is on a sunbeam by tilly walden this was the final book that i read during that evening where i fancied reading all of the queer graphic novels and this deals with kind of first love um kind of i would say discovering your sexuality but i'm not sure there's any hetero couples in this novel so i don't even know if it's a world where hetero people exist but it's a really really beautiful read um the story is fantastic and the artwork is absolutely gorgeous and then there's a really cool use of colour that I potentially didn't really notice earlier on in the book. Okay as you get towards the end they use colour to signify different kind of plot lines so you've got one one character story that's in red, one's in orange, one's in blue and it's a really great way of signal signifying what's going on because a lot of time in graphic novels and manga you need those little cues to basically keep you on track of what's going on the the next two books i'd say go together really we've got battle royale and battle royale angel's border so Battle Royale is obviously the original novel you can see it's a nice chunky one but it reads really quickly I couldn't believe it actually I was about three or four days before the end of the month and I was only maybe 300 pages in this is about 650 pages total and then suddenly in the space of a day I think I read 250 pages of it. It's so fast paced and you genuinely don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to survive. Um, for those that don't know, it takes place in a dystopian... Um, it's roughly based on Japan and in this future i'm not sure if it's really a future but in this world every year um i think it's like it works out as like 2000 students are entered into this program 
where they basically have to fight to the death until only one victor remains. So yeah, I really, really loved Battle Royale. It was so good. Um, And then I saw that Angel's Border exists and this tells... Oh. And this is a manga which expands on a little bit of the backstory of a few of the smaller characters that you don't see very much of. Um, I won't go into too much detail about what this book's about because it's slightly spoilery but essentially like these are kind of like they go on at the same time sort of. This one shows flashbacks but you do also get not flashbacks as much but you get a lot of look into individual characters histories in Battle Royale. And now on to the books that I didn't read physically. First up we've got Sabriel by Garth Nix. This was another one of the host fave books of whatever a thon. It was on Row of Wandering Through Worlds. Um, it was on her list of favourites and I managed to get a copy of the audiobook through my local library. Initially I wasn't terribly keen on it. I think it moves really really quickly and you have to absorb a lot of the lore very quickly and I felt like I kept losing my place but the second half of the story really engaged me and I found that I had a really good time with it. So much so that I then moved on to read Livial, also by Garth Nix. And this book is kind of like a soft reset for the story. So we're no longer following Sabriel, we're following one of the Claire um, called Livial, and we're also following one of Sabriel's children. I felt like because it was kind of a soft reset this book felt more like the first book in a duology rather than the middle book in a trilogy. I also started Aborson but I didn't manage to finish that during the month of June and then the next group of books I read were the Wayward Children books. I'd previously only read Across the Green Grass Fields, which is book six, and it follows a character that you haven't met in any of the books. So I kind of went into the books not really having any established knowledge about the world, and I just had so much fun. Like each book has got different things that make it so good so every heart a doorway is kind of more like a murder mystery than a portal fantasy and I loved learning how the doorways worked or at least sort of how they worked and meeting a lot of characters at once as well as Hearing about some of the worlds that these characters can potentially travel to. And then I went, uh, I kind of finished the book going, well, that was really cool. I hope that we can travel backwards in time as well as forwards in time. Because some of the characters that die in the first book, I really wanted to visit their worlds. I'd group down among the sticks and bones and come from come tumbling down together because they both predominantly take place in the moors which is a really cool um world i think what i love about it is it is that kind of spooky horror world but the characters of jack and jill are also complex and intriguing so i really enjoyed both of those books and then I enjoyed um, 
in an absent dream and juice like wounds because I just I love the concept of the goblin market and the idea of fair value I would say that beneath the, the beneath the sugar sky I think that's what it's called that was probably my least favourite but then the bar for these books is just so high so I'd say that the rest of the books are up here and then Sugar Sky's there. Obviously, I still really loved um, Across the Green Grass Fields when I reread that. I also read Verity by Colleen Hoover. I'd previously not read any Colleen Hoover and probably this book wasn't the best introduction to this author because she states herself in her acknowledgements that it isn't her usual genre but it was a really good read um it had a kind of gothic feel and it's been a long time since i read rebecca so maybe it's not a fair comparison but i got kind of rebecca vibes from it i also felt like a lot of these characters were morally grey and you kind of wonder, well, is this person telling you the truth or is there more to their story? And it was kind of like that throughout. And, and then the epilogue just kind of sealed it up in this really dark bundle. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to find more Colleen Hoover books in a similar vein. If they exist, please let me know because I'd love to hear. And then I also read an arc of Never Kiss Your Roommate by Feline Harms. This is, um, it was an arc, but this book is now out and it's just unapologetically queer. You, I think, I'm trying to think of your characters so your kind of two main protagonists you've got a lesbian girl and a bisexual boy and then their love interests are a bisexual girl and a pansexual boy I think and there was just there were some really funny moments and the fact that it felt so comfortably Queer and there wasn't it didn't feel like there was the usual oh this person's gonna out me kind of thing to it but then the the negatives of this book are it's set in the UK and there are a number of things that didn't quite add up to like the school actually being in the UK and there was also a really random kidnapping subplot that I wouldn't say it came out of nowhere, but you didn't expect like, there to be a kidnapping in this book. And then it was resolved really quickly. I also reread The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. It's a, it's a really, really good book. But I would say that the start of it is a lot slower. So by the end of it, you feel really affirmed. It's a really well-written book that makes a lot of great points but maybe the first 200 or so pages of it are kind of preamble but then the the last 100 150 pages are exceptional so it kind of like, I've I've forgotten to give my star ratings throughout this video I will try and remember to put them in the description box but basically the fact that like it's quite slow and there's not much to it for the first bit means that this book averages out at a 4.5 but that just shows you like how exceptional the last portion of it is. I listened to The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay this was the second Tremblay book that I've read and it gave me all the same feels as Head Full of Ghosts in that 
you're not really sure if this is paranormal or not and then it had a really killer ending i mean there's there's not much more i can say oh yeah it was also queer which i don't know why i wasn't expecting it because i think it's right in the blurb but unexpectedly queer book for the win yay um like i wouldn't say it's quite a five star read but it's very much a i want to read all the tremblay books and he's fast becoming an author that i see his name i go yeah i'm probably gonna love that i also listened to frost art which is which was another one of the host fave books it featured on gab's list i mean no surprise it's middle grade and it was very kind of middle of the road for me it had a really good yeti character and it felt like it was like a unique setting a unique concept but i just don't feel invested enough that i want to read more of it i also read the lucky escape which is the new laura jane williams novel it was kind of just a standard romance i would say that the unsmo unsupportive critical mother made me a little bit uncomfortable especially as she magically changed her ways after being told that she wasn't being very nice it just rubbed me up the wrong way about how unrealistic that was i read the second book in the a song below water series um a chorus rises and it was exceptional um i can categorically say that is a sequel yeah it feels more like a sequel than a companion you are following a different protagonist in a chorus rises but it follows on from the events of A Song Below Water and you also do revisit like Effie and Tavi. So definitely make sure you've read A Song Below Water before you even like pick up A Chorus Rises because I'm pretty sure the blurb will spoil what happens in A Song Below Water. But it was easily a five star read for me and i also read the first in the i hear the sunspot series which follows a deaf protagonist and a guy that like he becomes friends with to to help him take notes in class and they end up falling for one another it's really sweet and i do plan on reading the rest of the series i guess it's just a case of prioritizing it and the final book that i'm going to talk about i've saved the worst for last and i don't know if this is controversial but it's the midnight library by matt haig i absolutely detested this book it made me feel so low it was at the same it was simultaneously incredibly trite and also so pessimistic and the fact that it didn't feel like even vaguely novel in its concept <sighs> was a terrible it was an unintentional pun but that was a terrible pun it was basically like butterfly effect oh it's a wonderful life you know this like your actions have an impact that you don't even see and the world would be a worse place without you i know a butterfly effect has the opposite but um it just I just did not like it at all and it put me in such a low mood oh, why does everyone love it it's bad sorry right i'm gonna wrap up the 
this video now because honestly like I don't have much more to say beyond the fact that it wasn't original and it was just it made me sad but not in a like a little life made me sad but in a you know cathartic this is a beautiful novel I genuinely have connected with these characters the Midnight Library just made me sad and oh anyway end of video <laughs> um I, I I suppose I should probably give you some stats actually apparently I read 30 books in the month of Jude I haven't done my personal page tracker because it's a lot of work I don't have time right now but I am currently having a look at Storygraph to have a look about what stats Storygraph can give me. So Storygraph reckons I read 7,743 pages in June. Um, the majority of them were fast paced. Um, the majority of them were under 300 pages. Well, a little over half. Um, largely queer and whilst my average rating in the month of june was 4.22 the lowest i rated a book was 1.5 stars and the highest i rated was five stars and in fact i had four or five stars in the month of june which is exceptional because i do not give out many five stars but it was just a really good month i will pop on screen uh, the chart that shows the distribution of um my star ratings so you'll see i think that's all i've got to say about the books that i read in june but i'd uh i'd love to know what you read in june did you can participate in whatever thon do you have any differing opinions than me on any of these books and until next time bye